Well, in this video, I want to show you how you can you know, maybe organize your survey results a little bit more effectively. So here you've got kind of a sample college survey results from, I think this is just from one class I took from one of the groups, and uh, set it up so that each uh, column here each column represents you know one result one student's uh, responses generally when dealing with a data analysis you want each column to represent each variable or each question and then each row we want to represent each um, st individual student response so I want to go through right now and show you how to uh, convert this basically from columns to rows so first thing I want to do is highlight all of your data once you enter all, all your data from your responses the keyboard shortcut for that is Control C if you're using a PC. So click on Control, or sorry, Control A, Control A, or if you're using a Mac, Command A. So I just clicked it, and hopefully notice that put somewhere else. If I click uh, Control A on a PC or Command A in a Mac, that highlights everything. And then you want to click um, Control C or Command C. Click on edit, excuse me, and copy, you're going to get the keyboard shortcut. So I'm using a Mac, so it's a Command C. If you're using a PC, Control C. So Command C. All right, and then I, I you should have a worksheet on your Google Sheets that says survey results in rows. Or if you don't, you can just click on the plus right here to get another worksheet on the bottom, blank worksheet. And what I'm going to do here is click on edit. and then paste special. So you don't want to just paste, paste special, and then paste transpose. So once you've highlighted all of your responses and copied, then click on a new worksheet on the bottom tab, edit, paste special, and then click on paste transpose. And there we go. So we have the data. Now instead of rows, we have them as columns. Now, because of the formatting of this, what we want to do is I'd like to have um, one row, the top row, be the headers, the question numbers, and then everything afterward be the student responses. But unfortunately, with um, the formatting, we get this one weird um, row that encompasses five columns. I don't know if this is the most efficient way to do this, but if I want to clean this up and make one row be all the question numbers, and then everything else be the responses. Right click, highlight the first row, right click, insert one above. And now what I want to do is I'm going to highlight the second row, just these five cells. Go back here, highlight all these. And you want to click on one of the boundaries till you see the dotted lines and drag it down. So once you have this, now I don't need these first two rows, so I'm going to highlight both of these two. Right click and then delete. And here we have this um, the green data corresponds with the questions about work, units, sleep, exercise, and social media. So Go with units, work, just type in sleep, exercise, and social media. Or you could call this, you know, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, Q6, because that's that's what they are. So this would be, you know, do you want to analyze these uh, responses? The next block in the light blue. These are the Oxford questionnaires from the Oxford question. And as part of your project, um, you don't actually have to analyze these questions. So you can leave them if you want, kind of ignore them. Or if you want to ignore them completely, you could click and drag and highlight all these. Get to the end where it says the Oxford score. and then right click and then delete columns and now starting at question 36 i ask you to analyze a couple of these questions 
All right, so I want to go over just one more thing, and I'll have a secondary video. But I asked you to test your claim about uh, your mean happiness score for all SOJC students using your survey results. So with that claim, you know, you should have made a conjecture about what the average is going to be. And that's question one, the self-score. So I think maybe the easiest way to um, analyze this data, get summer statistics and graphics, is to bring it over to StatKey. So if we do that, all you have to do is, now that we have just one header row, question one, then all the responses, highlight the column, uh, copy. Click on the keyboard shortcut, Control C or Command C. Go over to Stat Key. For that one, we're dealing with just one quantitative variable. Click on the Edit Data. I'm going to click uh, Control A or Command A, highlight, delete all of that, and then paste. And scroll to the top. Here we have the responses. Notice we have Q1. And if you want, you can change that to self-score. So if you enter the data this way, the first column is an identifier. That's not true. There's only one column, but the data does have a header row. So click OK. And you could see your summary statistics over here, number of responses, your average of the sample, standard deviation, five number summary. And then if you want, you include uh, dot plots, histograms, you can kind of manipulate if you want to see how your, the distribution looks. And or a box plot, and kind of use these, a couple outliers here, to analyze your responses for at least that first question about the mean happiness score for everybody. Another thing that might help when you're um, looking at the highest and lowest association, I'm going to jump to question three from your conjectures. Is I ask you to figure out which do you think would have the highest and lowest correlation? So let's say, oh, I did too many here. Let's say 37. You think 37 is the highest correlation and 38 had the lowest association. Now, what if your group's picked? So when you want to look at that, what I ask you to do to test your claims is separate the responses into two groups, those that selected agree, you know, slightly disagree, moderately disagree strongly, and those that selected disagree. And I want to go over to question 37. And specifically, I want to kind of sort this. So if I want to sort this and look at all of it, agree versus disagree, and I want to keep track for question 37 on here, other opinions of other people's opinions of me are important. Don't forget to look at your key. Which one are disagree? Which one are agree? I believe this one six here is agree. Generally, six is going to be happy, and one's going to be corresponding to not happy. But if we like look at uh, say thirty seven, I feel that people appreciate me. This one for sure strongly disagree is going to be one, and strongly. Agree will be six. So I ask you to do is kind of break this down into two categories. So to do that, I want to you know, separate or sort this column, but then I don't want to lose the self-score. So the way to do that is to highlight all of your data, which is Command A for Macs or Control A for PCs. Click on the Data tab up top, Sort Range, and Click on data has a header row, since this data does have a header row. And you want to sort by, let's say, 37. And then A to Z, click sort. And all of the data got sorted. If you notice right here, Q7 was, you know, ascending order. But all the rest of the data is still paired up. So this person who answered 2 on question 37, they answered 80 for the self-score, and so on. So for that part of the project, what I want you to do is to separate one, two, three, and look at, oh, let me just highlight these. Look at, okay, these are the mean score, these three values, figure out the mean of these, copy this over to stat key, 
and then compare that to is there a difference in means for the four through six group. And so looking at those two data sets, get the motor stat key, and of course I'd like to see some visuals, compare those two um, data sets to each other, but then of course make sure to run through a complete hypothesis test. All right, the last thing I want to talk about on this is how do you test your claim for number two? Using your survey results to determine which of the variables of those uh, first six, you know, working, units, sleep, extra, social media, has the highest and lowest correlation to self-score. So if we go here for uh, units, 20 to 21, make sure I got that correctly. That's question two. Oh, sorry, I have these switched. So this should be work and units. So what I want you to do is look at a correlation between these. Let's just focus on work for a second. There's two ways you could, you know, basically you want to turn this into purely numerical data, not ranges. One way is to look at, if you look at how many hours do you work, make 0, 1, 1 through 9, 2, 10 through 15, 3, 15 through 24, 20 through 25, 5, and 25 plus 6. Essentially what that is is to turn all of these into just 1 through 6 as an increasing range. So if you see uh, 25, make that a 6. Make the zeros 1s and the 1 through 9 would be 2 and so on. Just get these basically have the same output as all the rest of the questions. And then you could do a correlation between um, you know, question one and work to see how those compare. Another approach, and this is up to you and your group, is to basically take the middle. So I'm looking at between 20 and 25 hours a week. Well, you could just guess. We don't know what this person picked, but let's just say it's the middle, 22.5. We've got 0, 0, 0. The next group is between 0 and 9. So maybe you make that the exact center between, say, one hour and nine hours. And that would be about five. 25 hours. So this category goes with the 25 hours plus. So as a group and on your report, if you want to take this approach, you have to decide, well, what do you think is 25 hours plus? I think it would be reasonable to say, well, maybe we're going to make that... 30 hours a week, you could say it's 35. It's somewhat artificial because we don't know, but make sure whatever you decide to change these over to make these purely numeric to uh, make it clear how you're going to convert these over in your report. And then you have the little b's, 22.5 and 17.5 and so on. 17. 17.5, 22.5. Five, zero, five, zero, five, and 22.5. So some way you need to make um, all these values purely numeric, but now here you could do correlation between the self-score and the work, going back to you know, chapter two, sections two, five, and two, six. And again, I encourage you to use a stat key or some technology to look at how to get those correlation correlation that's looking at two quantitative variables so you want to go in here and um, edit the data enter your data here or upload your data and if you want to do the upload technique I would suggest you take once you have converted this all over go over to the file download as and CSV because uh, stack key uploads CSV problem files without a problem. So once you've converted all this information, file, download as CSV, and then you can then make sure to keep track of where you save that file, where it downloads, download folder, or documents, or desktop. And then you would go over here, excuse me, go over to um, the upload file and highlight the two columns, and then you could get your correlation line. 